Hello and welcome to today's quick video and today I'm going to be removing the power supply from my spare C5 to see if there is a bridge rectifier that is compatible with the one in the Sony F1 that I'm currently repairing. So I haven't really held this in with many screws and this machine has been apart a number of times because it has actually yielded a number of other bits and pieces for other C5s. Uh, the bottom boards have gone, which is servo control and um, other items of that nature. Uh, the back here, we've got the power supply board. Doesn't look like we have... The, this here is the bridge rectifier. It doesn't look like it's actually compatible with the, um, the one in my F1. However... That's not going to stop me removing it because it's got these useful fuses and it will generally prove to be quite handy just to have this out of this particular deck. There's also this very large heat sink so it's very likely that we do have uh, some MOSFETs attached to that which might be handy and may be compatible with ones which are in the... Um, F1 at the moment. Now if I remember rightly, this whole unit, or this whole side, comes out as one piece and then you separate the parts off of it. It's the same story with this side which is the tuner module, but as you can see this has been stored, um, so I bought this for about £5 off eBay, and as you can see it's been stored in a very moist environment. It's actually a wonder that the um, uh, that the machine actually still worked well. I don't know about picture quality, but uh, it certainly worked for what I was using it for at the time. And it's also going to uh, provide a number of very useful spares for my um, C7. So I'm going to try and keep it in as one in one piece for as long as possible. So it just means that it's easier to store. So you, this isn't a switch mode power supply. You have this huge transformer in the bottom so unlike the um unlike the f1 i don't think it's no it's certainly not using a switch mode power supply hence why you've got this massive transformer the c7 and the uh t7 which is t7 is basically the multi-standard version of this machine they do seem to use a switch mode PSU, which is interesting. So I've actually got a C7 um, as a spares unit, but the problem with that C, the problem with the C7 is that could also have um, power supply problems because the power supply in that one of the capacitors did blow up. So it's unlikely that the components that I need are in any fit state, but. Let's take the uh, let's take this board out. So first off, I just need to see how it's held in. So it looks like if I move the wiring connectors off the distribution board here, if I can, there is a screw down in there. And actually, this moves out the way quite nicely because that's been out before. Ah, oh, that's handy. This is the because I've had this out before. Um, a lot of this is already uh, already available, so I can remove this because we've got the fuse on there, which could be quite handy. This is what looks like a mains suppression capacitor. So you've obviously got mains inputs into here from there. Uh, so that goes via the power switch on the front. So this is the mains cable that goes into the power switch. That goes into this board through this fuse. Uh, you've got a smoothing capacitor there. That then comes out into... Uh, I think that comes out to oh this on the back, which is a voltage selector. So it's got manual voltage selection. 
so it's 240 at the moment. Hence why probably it's not a switch mode supply, because you have to manually switch uh, the input voltage. And then that goes... So transformer... Yeah, so then that goes into the transformer, and I think that is stepped, stepped down into the supply itself. So looking at the thickness of these tracks, this is probably probably the hot side of the supply, hence why the rectifier is in there. Uh, there's four there. That looks like another rectifier, which is probably what this uh, heat sink is all about. Then we've got large capacitors. Don't worry, this hasn't been turned on for a number of years. So large rate capacitors. Uh, capacitors down here as well. So I'm hoping that there are some fusible uh, fusible links in there, so I can hopefully borrow those for the other one. But for now, let's see what we can do about getting all of this out of the way. So I can borrow this little board here, so that'll be quite handy, certainly for the... Um, Certainly for that smoothing cap and also this fuse. I want to get this whole unit out so I can disconnect the transformer. It's part of the reason why these machines weigh so much is the size of the transformer and also the fact that the entire deck is made of die cast. Um, I'm not sure if it's aluminium or steel, judging by the way it's rusting slightly, probably steel. So it's made of a sort of cast steel, which is excellent for quality, not so much for ease of moving it around and weight. So this screw here holds this plate in, which is like a shield around the transformer. So we have screw down the bottom there and we've got another screw down in there which if I just focus on that that should allow me to move this board out of the way so I'm just going to give that a go quickly here we go so here is the power supply distribution board itself it is very simple actually you've got this one large heat sink with with this transistor on it, which I'll just grab a photo of for the part number. We can check what that is compatible with. Uh, on this board you have this huge rectifier, which I'll just grab a photo of so I can get the data sheet for that. Uh, that is a... Oh, hang on. That is a DS5BN. This one is an M4B41-7321. Uh, looking at it, the plus and minus points are in technically in the wrong place for what I need. I'll grab a photo of that as well. And then we have a 4 amp, 2.5 amp, a 1.25 amp, and a selection of a large reservoir caps, but they are only 25 volt in value. So it looks like that transformer is stepping down quite a bit. So it's unlikely that these will be suitable um, because the rectifiers that I have in the F1 are at a much or rated for a much higher voltage. I'm also not certain that these fusible resistors will be any use either. Um, I've got a C7 supply so I'm going to grab that but for the minute I'll probably put this one back together as I don't think apart from these fuses I don't think uh, anything out of here would be of any use. 
So I'll grab the C7 supply and we'll have a look at that and see if there's anything useful on there that I can remove to test. So although I didn't get the power supply items I want, I have managed to salvage some belts which don't feel too brittle. They feel a bit stretched. Um, and I've also got some idlers as well which do feel a bit uh, smooth, but they're not... Let's have a look. They're not terribly cracked. So... I'm actually wondering if I can either use some rubber renew or try the trick that uh, a lot of people seem to recommend, which is to boil them. So that would be interesting to see if it actually does work. I'll have to look up on that and uh, report back to see if it actually does restore um, any of these belts at all. These are large flat belts, particularly getting particularly rare these days. Um, well, not rare, I mean, you can probably measure them out and get the relevant size, but they are getting quite expensive. So trying to keep a sort of a handy supply is probably a good idea. Anyway, let's go and get the C7 supply and see if that yields anything. So this is uh, one of the core parts of the supply out of the, um, out of the C7. And it's in sort of like two clamshell halves clam clam shelled clam shelled halves so we have what looks like a much smaller step down transformer but we do have a 3 watt 3.3 ohm fusible resistor that we can certainly take out of this that's the same pretty certain that's the same spec as the one in the in the F1 so we also have, I'm going to grab some photos of these power output transistors. So we've got some, uh, we've got some D743R13Es, so they may be compatible with something. Uh, we have, what else have we got? These two down here. And we don't seem to have, unfortunately, the bridge rectifier that I would be after for the F1. But I should be able to certainly borrow this one, or rather take that one. And that means I'll just have to buy another one. I was hoping for two, so I could actually try it before I bought, uh, bought a pair, but... Not to worry. I'm also trying to work out why this failed. There is a particularly nasty dry joint around this capacitor. So C109, which is this big fat one, which is a 400 volt, uh, 100 microfarad capacitor. Uh, the capacitor that actually blew and created the smoke show, I think there was two of them. There was this one here and this one here. We've also got this capacitor, which is a, that one is a 400 volt, 100 microfarad, that one there. So if those blew, there was probably a problem further out elsewhere in the supply. So looking at the path that voltage takes to come in. So voltage is coming in looks like it's coming in to here I can't remember off the top of my head where that goes actually that might go to if I can find it there it is there was a small box here and we had uh, very similar to the C5 Actually, I could borrow these belts out of here as well, could do, do the boiling trick on those. So I did save all of the belts and idlers from this one as well. So looking at this, we have this main board here, uh, which I think uh, mains voltage goes into. It's also got this two amp fuse. Mains voltage goes into here, gets distributed. 
I think mains voltage comes in hot into this board, in fact into both of these boards. There is an output on this side of the transformer, and there's this smaller power distribution board here which is filled with fuses, which is quite handy. So there are a lot of fuses on here as well. Uh, all of them appear to be intact. So it obviously comes in hot into here, goes through, I think these are mains, possibly main suppressor capacitors, and there's a what looks like a little transformer here, but it certainly did take out, pretty certainly took out this, judging by the scorch marks on them. However, the scorch marks may have come from this side, because obviously it's sandwiched together like that, there is every possibility that it came from this side. So there could be a short on this side of the board as well. My money is on this big capacitor, but there's no signs that that has, that has uh, ruptured or anything of that nature. So the failure of this particular supply remains a bit of a mystery. However, I'm going to keep it handy because I want to grab that and also cross-reference uh, some of the other components on there as well, see if they're compatible. Anyway, oh yeah, I can also keep that handy as well for all of these fuses. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, if you have found this video interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.